everybody, welcome to Jamie's Autos. Today I'm driving a customer car, a car that I found for somebody, a 1999 build, 2000 compliance, 2000 model year, Hyundai Lantra SE 1.8, equipped with a 4-speed automatic slush box. Now, this was a car I was given a, I was given a choice to find, well, I was asked to find it for less than $3,000, yep, in Australia. I had, to find, I had to find cars here that cost a lot more. Now, $3,000 for a car in this country is not particularly much. You see, registration and roadworthy together are at least $1,000. So before you even start, you need to spend $1,000 on the car just to make sure it's got rego and roadworthy. So, the J2 Lantra came out in 95 for the 96 model year. Came out in quite a basic trim, didn't have air conditioning, had power steering, didn't have power windows. Basically it was the senile spec, and you do see the odd senile spec 1.8. More likely than not, they came with free auto or free air, which was a bit of a problem because most people wanted both. So they, some people who didn't want to spend that much money on their car accepted one, not the other. And I'd rather the free air than the free auto, but many of these people bought automatics, so that was a bit of a problem. In 997, Air conditioning was standard across the whole range, so if you buy a Lantra from 97 onwards, you will get air conditioning as standard. Power windows are standard from 98 onwards, from 1998 for the 999 model year. Well, we got the cars in February 99, but they were late 98 build, some of them. They had a facelift, and uh, from then on until mid-2000 when this thing died and was replaced by the Elantra. Why on earth did I end up with a bloody Lantra? Well, it had everything to do with everything to do with the fact that it was a very good example of one and was actually not in bad nick. It only had a few major, few mechanical issues. Of course, you may be hearing there is a clunk from the front suspension that sounds like the bottom ball joint's history with it, but there's not much else that's actually wrong with it. The AC runs, not overheating, it's not pissing out oil, it's not dropping fuel everywhere, it's not smelling like a pack of burning matches. It actually isn't bad. The Lantra's is, shall we say, excruciatingly slow. Now, from a standstill, as you can see, my foot is welded to the floor, absolutely welded to the floor, and we're struggling. Come on, come on, now we're at 60. Man, I've got a laundry list of cars right up my asshole because this car has no power at all. Embarrassingly slow, even on a even on a normal 60k suburban road, this thing is bloody slow. Yep, it just has no power at all. I can't imagine how bad this will be on a freeway. When you buy a cheap car, particularly in this country, you have to realise that there is a lot of dross out there. And try to actually get a car for less than three grand, that engine works, that, is, that isn't a complete and total utter pile of garbage, is, an, is a success story in itself. It's got the odd issue here and there. Well, you expect that. You're buying so cheap, you basically are buying something that you could probably rent out for a very small amount of money. But then again, if you want to rent a car or do a car share, it's actually more expensive than buying an old banger. So if you want to be cheap on your motor and you don't want to spend a cent, you're much better off buying an old banger like this because in a year this will cost you including purchase price maintenance registration insurance yeah, about five grand to share a car costs you upwards of seven and a half thousand dollars a year if you want to do anything less than 30 days of driving so it actually isn't a bad idea to buy a banger like this now if you want to drive around in a Hyundai Lantra, you've got to think, think to yourself one thing, yes I'm buying a cheap car, but is it really worth spending three grand on a car that might last you a year, or is it worth buying something a little better, five or six grand, something that'll last you three or four years, i.e. it gets 
Yaris, Micra. Is it worth doing something like that? If you like the person with this car and only have the budget for three grand, fine, it's good to buy a bomb like this. But if you have a little more and only want to spend that small sort of amount of money on a car, may I urge you spend something like four or five on a much newer car that has less wear and tear items that are going to go wrong. Because, of, because a couple of grand in this market does make a material difference. And on the whole, this example of a Landra is good. As a car, hmm, wow. If you were in here, you would smell the plastic sense of, I haven't made it. Just plastic, 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 plastic. Yeah, you get the picture. It isn't particularly welcoming in here. And I don't know, where they actually got this material from. You see, the Lantra was from a time when Hyundai was just a byword for plastic that fell to, that fell to pieces when you hit it with an amoeba. <laughs> so you can imagine, well, this is what it feels like in here. Of course, price is a very tempting thing. Lantra sold, like most Hyundais at the time, on how cheap it was. And everyone will say to you, the XL was the best selling car in Australia. But I'll let you in on a reason for that. It was the best selling car in Australia because it was the most stolen car in Australia. I'm not joking. These things make the Vauxhall Novas and the Suzuki Swifts look like Fort Knox. This car has an immobilizer fitted for a good reason. Hyundai fitted them because a lot of Accents, XLs, or Accents and XLs are the same, are one and the same thing. XL if you're an Australian like me. And Lantras, Sonatas, Escupades, or Pooper Scoopers as they were known, were easily stolen and not really well recovered. Or if they were recovered in a tree and unfortunately the thief was in pieces. Yes, they were that unsafe. If you stole one and crashed one, I'm sorry, it's not a very good place to be. Put on my foot down, it just won't go. The auto box is like it's in stupid mode. It goes to the highest gear and then just sits there. Mm. And my gearbox, oh wait, am I going to change that? Yeah, I'm going to kick down that after, like now. Bit of a, bit of a delay. Just waiting and waiting and waiting. Like a semi trailer's going to come past you because you're going so bloody slow. I've got a cyclist. I actually catch up to a cyclist. That is quite an amazing fit in a Lantra 1.8 automatic. Let's go around the corner. Understeer, oh my god. Scratch that at reasonable speeds is okay, but into a corner and anything at slow speeds, <laughs> lots and lots of understeer. Hyundai weren't into making performance saloons then, it was just an economy car with lots of equipment to tempt the budget conscious buyer into one of these. And let's just see, oh my goodness, more understeer. Oh my god, we're going to crash into a Camry understeer. This is Really not the best sort of chassis in the world. I mean, why would you have a steering wheel that's got mounts down here so you can do this? The advanced institute of motor is shuffling. I'm a shuffler. I drive a Hyundai Elantra because I think I'm very smart and I want to save lots of money. And I'm really poor and I need a cheap car to from point A to point B. And I'm too cheap to buy a Corolla, so I'm going to buy a Elantra, buy the SE Trim. Buy with these blank out switches to remind me just how useless I am, how I haven't achieved anything in my life. And also, I'm going to buy one with an engine that's the size of a pea. And I'm going to buy it with a slush box. Mmm, very nice. Mmm. What, what, what are you saying about yourself? If you drive one of these, what are you saying about yourself? I'm broke. I like the smell of tin and plastic garbage. I mean, come on! What, what materials do they use? Where are they getting these materials from? Where do they get these? Chocolate tray, perhaps? Those Whitmans of yours? Made the form there. Made this. Plastic. Plastic. That's not, that's not felt. That's plastic. Just with some sort of thread stuck on it. Look what adorns you. Maybe Lantra.
one should be here. Not here. Mm -hmm. Clock looks alright at least. Where are the headlights? They are working. But they don't eliminate the instrument cluster. You don't see those dials. I'm sorry, officer. I can't see my dials because I, have, I haven't got a car that actually has an illuminated dial, so that's why I went for 150 kilometers now. Not that you could go that fast in this car. One thing you've got to realise this thing is the name, Lantra. To me, it just sounds like Lancer. What is it? The Aldi home brand equivalent of the Lancer is the Lantra. Now it's known as the Elantra. Still, it doesn't sound particularly nice either. So there you are, the 2000 Hyundai Lantra SE Automatic. Not a brilliant car dynamically, but for $3,000 it does its job reasonably well. Besides, for a three grand car you're looking for a good condition, reliable car that is straight and ultimately will be cheap to run. And that Lantra defines all of those characteristics.